Hey, visionaries, you are now tuned in to the Starts With A Vision podcast, where everything you do in life starts with a vision. If your vision is clear or foggy, you are in the right place. It's time to go take what's yours, because there's a vision only you can see, and a dream only you can dream. And now, your host, Mr. Starts With A Vision. What is going on, guys? What's the word? What's the word? What is the word? Today's episode is powerful. I'm going to say it one more time. Today's episode is powerful, and here's why. The reason why today's episode is powerful is for this reason. The power of a story. Okay? Today I interviewed Stacy Walker. Now, she's an entrepreneur. She's been through a lot, and her journey is going to teach you so much about slowing down, about being patient, about taking some rest for yourself. So many things that you can learn from this interview. Stacy Walker is so, so, so amazing. I can't even say it enough. I don't want to spoil the show. I don't want to try to talk her up so much because I'm going to let you get your own life changed by this interview. So, Today's guest is Stacy Walker. Listen to this about two, three, four times if you have to. I think you will because there is so, so much knowledge and so many nuggets inside of this interview. What's going on, everybody? It is, you already know who it is. It's your boy Isaiah Fowler, a.k.a. Mr. Suave. And we have one of the world's, one of the Internet's, best kept secrets right here she's officially out here right now and i want to say stacy walker how are you doing today i'm doing fabulous isaiah thank you so much for having me today no problem i thank you for um being able to connect because uh we connected on facebook for everybody listening and uh you know just connected and we, and we had a few words and i like the synergy and somebody actually uh referred me to you told me about you and um you know we got to talk and the more I learned about your story, I was like, wow, you know, this is amazing. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I definitely vibed with you right away. Yeah. And we have a mutual fa- friend, Chandra. Chandra. Yeah, that's right. Yep. yep yeah. yeah. She, she's the one. She's the one who told me about you. Love that lady. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's all cool. So um, we were talking earlier before we mm-hmm. got on this interview about just the power of a story and, um, you know, how you use that. So, um, you know, who, just let everybody know who you are, because what I want to do is I want to dive deep into your story, because you let me know just a little. You let me know a little sprinkle of something. Yes. And I was piece, like, yeah. whoa, we need to we need a whole piece of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my I guess that you want me to start with my entrepreneurial journey, like how all of that started. And then I'll just try to yeah, go fast that. forward, go yeah, go through this quickly and then you can dig deeper. Yeah. Well, Let's see here. I never, ever thought that I would be in this place today. I mm-hmm. um, never grew up around any entrepreneurs. I was raised to, you know, go to school, get my education, get a career, stay at that career until I retired. So up until 2008, you know, I worked many, many different jobs because either I quit or got fired. And don't get me wrong, I was great at whatever I did, but I got bored. I felt like I didn't fit in. Um, I thought there was something wrong with me for a long time because I just couldn't figure out why in the heck can I just be like uh, Joe or Jane over there that has been with a certain company for X amount of years. Right arrives and work on time. No, I was the one that either got fired or quit. (laughs) And, um, you know, I, I never felt right. And in 2008, uh, about the end of 2007, um, I started feeling pretty dang ill and I, I was walking around just not feeling right for, for weeks. And finally it got to the point to where I finally went to the emergency room and my emergency room doctor was like, why did you wait so long to get in here? He said, if you would have waited any longer, you would be dead, Stacy." So I didn't realize the seriousness of my illness. And basically what was revealed to me is that I have a small liver 
liver has to work harder than, you know, a normal sized liver. So what was going on is that my liver was not getting rid of toxins. Uh, it was basically making my liver was not getting rid of the toxins. So, uh, the toxins were staying in my body. My body became septic and I was dying like for real. And, um, Basically, what I had to do, I had to make a choice. I had to change my lifestyle, which was not healthy back then, Mm -hmm. and uh, go home, get some bed rest, uh, rejuvenate my body and get back to health. And I thought it was only going to take like a month or two, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Uh, It took almost a year. So I was on bed rest for almost a year. And Mm -hmm. during that year, I could not work, right? Mm -hmm. I had to stay in bed and, you know... (laughs) <laughs> re rejuvenate my body. So uh, I was living off of my retirement, my savings. You know, I had my my oldest. He was you know younger at the time. Uh, my f- first husband. He had two jobs. I was the breadwinner. I worked at the UT Health Science Center in San Antonio uh, in the psychiatry department, and uh, he he couldn't float the bill. So we're we're just going through my money as. I stayed on bed rest, and uh, what I ended up doing, I looked online, tried to find a work-at-home job, really didn't know anything about any of that. I just, like, heard it through the grapevine. Like I said, I knew nothing about entrepreneurship online. And think, 2008, right? Right. It's not like it was... like it is now, right. like nothing. So long story short, I got connected with a network marketing company. My upline told me that I would not be successful because I wasn't going out and networking and uh, recruit, recruiting people because they're telling me you need to go out to your community. I told them I can't, right? I can't put my life on the line. It's already on the line. So they basically told me I was going to fail. Well, I proved them wrong because I started learning everything about, you know, marketing, entrepreneurship, business building, Mm -hmm. and uh, because I had nothing but time on my head. I was on bed rest. So I ended up uh, recruiting so many people. Uh, I ended up training them for a fee, packaged up all my training, and ended up making more money doing that than the money that I made from commission through my uh, network marketing company that I was with. So I left that network marketing company behind within six months and started my own business because uh, network marketing companies are great, Mm -hmm. but the thing is, uh, I wanted all of it. I wanted to own it, right? Right. I didn't want to have to... I wanted everything. Mm -hmm. And plus I had realize that I really love teaching people and not just anyone, any type of online business owner, I can teach them marketing strategies so they can build their business. And that's what I did. Um, I did this by myself until 2013. My business was growing, uh, but it was slow and I just, I wasn't getting to where I wanted to be. And uh, what was going on, I say, is that I was not getting guidance. I did not hire a coach for the first five years. Um, I did not collaborate with other entrepreneurs. I was basically all by myself. Mm-hmm. So I swallowed my pride, got a mentor, $10,000 mentor, uh, $10,000 mentor. <laughs> Crazy. Like I, that was like the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and within three months I became an international best-selling author. I got, uh, attention from the new media, traditional media, top entrepreneurs, uh, my podcast won an award with 10 episodes, only 10 episodes. I was making my five figure months. Uh, so for that year, I worked about 14 hours a day. I had virtual assistants, but I was like hustling and I was surrounding myself around people who uh, basically hustled, right? Uh, putting their health on the line, basically didn't sleep, didn't eat right. And uh, what ended up happening, I started feeling sick again. Uh-oh. And I realized that I did not want to go down this route again. So what I ended up doing, Isaiah, at the height of my online business, mm-hmm. I, 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 I quit working and I went on a self-care sabbatical for two years. Mm. Right. And during the, the, those two years, I was still able to bring in income, you know, and uh, and it was hard to just drop everything. It really was. It was just hard to drop everything because I was addicted to working, the lifestyle, all of that. But I knew that I needed to get my mind and body right because what good is all that success if I'm six feet under? Mm-hmm. Uh, my relationship, 
relationships weren't that great, you know, like not with my son, not with myself. I was stressed out all the time. I gained a lot of weight. So that my definition of success was just it wasn't worth all that, not for my health. No, especially since I already had damage from my body from 2008. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I took two years off. And matter of fact, I just got back to work a year ago and my business has grown a lot faster than it did back in 2008. And it's because of course the network that I built and uh, collaborating with other entrepreneurs and also having a mentor or or a coach guiding me, Mm -hmm. investing in my, my business and uh, believing in myself, belief, and sharing my story. Right, right. Sharing my story has been the game changer for my business because I don't just share the good stuff. Mm-hmm. I share it all. Mm-hmm. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the shock factor. And, you know, I had to come to terms with that. You know, that the things that happened in my life, yeah, I made a lot of wrong choices, but actually I don't regret them. Like, they wouldn't. If it wasn't for those situations, I don't know if I'd be here today. Right. I don't know if I'd be here where I'm at today, which is living the life of my dreams right now and helping people and also realizing for a while now that I can design whatever life I want for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it all goes back to mindset. So uh, that's my short version of my story. And of course, we can go anywhere, right. anywhere with it. Well, you said a whole bunch, um, a mouthful <laughs> in terms of not like you're talking a lot, but like a lot happened, of course. And there are so many like chunks to take out of that. Mm-hmm. But I think that the biggest thing, um, what you what you've shared, something that really, really, really sticks out to me that nobody really talks about is it is OK to take a break. Mm-hmm. Um, me being young. I'm like, yo, I don't want no break. Like, right. you know what I mean? But yeah. you literally have shown from everything that you shared at this point, it is okay to take a break. Like, life is kind of like long, even though it's short. Like, we mm-hmm. still have time in a sense. Yes. You know, and you could bounce back. So, like, talk about just like the importance of knowing when to call something quits or when to take a break <laughs> from something, right? When to call something quits. Like if like right now I'm big on talking about self care and self love. Uh-huh. Uh, the thing is, is that I've seen so many entrepreneurs um, put themselves in an early grave and it's because they're chasing after their definition of success. Okay. Um, they're, they're not taking care of their bodies. Right. Uh, because they're so focused on that hustle and You know, of course, the people that I surrounded myself with, I thought that was the way that it was supposed to be. You know, I'm going to work my ass off every single day, sacrifice my sleep, uh, consume a lot of sugar, right? Forget my relationships with anybody because I'm going to sit here and build this thing because I am so obsessed with what I'm doing. I'm that passionate about it. It's like an obsession. I already have an addictive personality. So uh, it was extreme, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that you've got to realize, like, where's your health, right? Right. I mean, I, I've known 30-year-olds who, who've died, and that's that's really young, right? So I don't want to be that. I, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to uh, damage relationships, you know. Um, I just really had to reevaluate my life and where I wanted to go and, and slow down. So today I don't work 14 hours a day. I work Three to four, mm-hmm. three to four hours a day. Uh, I travel more. I take more breaks and go figure. I make more money this time around. So it was all a mindset thing. Mm-hmm. It was just all a mindset. Right. So I had to shift the way I was thinking. But I think the biggest uh, factor in knowing when to slow down, when to take a break, is you got to listen to your body. Mm-hmm. You got to be really aware of the relationships that you have. Are you really spending time uh, with the people that you love? Are you really spending time with yourself, right? Um, Are you doing things that fill you up other than your business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So me gaining weight, 30 pounds and not exercising for an entire year. And see, I love going outdoors. I'm an outdoor enthusiast. I stopped doing those things. And, you know, and I was like, you know, screw my relationship with my husband. Screw basically screw my relationship with my family, you know, because I'm building this thing. right? Right. And the thing is, I still work just as hard, but I'm more. I am more intentional about my time. Um, I actually, what I do, I have a calendar and I fit in my vacations first, um, my time off for myself first, wow. and then the things with my family, and then I start building, uh, putting in my business and mm. my projects that I have going on. That's amazing because you know what happens. There is a quote, and it says, "Don't design your job, your life around your job. Design your job around your life." Yes. And I agree with that. And before I didn't really get that Mm -hmm. and I didn't believe in that because I was like, how is that going to be possible? But the thing is, if you start building your business, right, you put the right systems in place, you get help, right? So many entrepreneurs do not get help. They don't hire people to take care of things that they have no business even taking care of. Right. Like some people are horrible graphic artists and they have like these things on Instagram and on their website and it's just awful. It's like, hand that stuff over to somebody else, especially if you're spending seven, eight hours on something that that someone else can do Mm -hmm. in 30 minutes, right? Right. You're not, you're not using your time wisely. Um, I think having a housekeeper is a smart business investment because at the end of the day, who really cares about how clean your floors are? And but it needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Dishes need to be done. But uh, it's not a luxury to have a housekeeper, you know. And it doesn't have to be all the time. If it's like three times a year, that that's three times in a year that somebody is helping you mm-hmm. keep keep your area clean, right? Right. So it's about you delegating and, and asking for help. I know I am bad about asking for help, Isaiah, Me too. but. The better, I'm a man, yeah, so. yeah. I don't know. It's a prideful thing. It's my ego. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I notice whenever I get help and, and invest in things like a housekeeper or somebody picking up my food or uh, having my family do stuff, you know, I had my oldest son taking care of my social media stuff mm-hmm. and I was paying, I wasn't paying him much. But the thing was, it, it, it helped me use my time wisely so I could focus on the things that I want to do that's going to make a bigger impact. Right. So it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And that's why I work less now. I work less because I I put the systems in place and it's from all these years of mistakes. So I'm trying to share my story with people as far as my personal life and my business about what they can do to like save some, save themselves from all these mistakes. Like a lot of people don't want to invest in a coach and it's like, so you think you're better off doing this by yourself and you have no idea where you're going than just going ahead and investing in somebody that can guide you and help you um, make the best decisions. And usually what trips people up, they either don't believe that hiring a coach is going to work for them mm-hmm. Right. They don't believe it, that it's going to work for them. And you hear us say believe um, until you 100 100 percent believe in, believe in yourself. Nothing's going to go right. Like you can do everything, quote unquote, right. Have the systems in place, strategies, all of that. But if you don't believe in yourself, you're basically wasting your time. You're 100 percent wasting your time, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because what happens is. Um, you just do all the things wrong that that coach would have been able to say, don't do this, do this. And you would have right. been so much further. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I made a five year mistake mm-hmm. and that's time I will never, ever get back Right. ever. And I still kick myself in the butt for that. But from that mistake, I can teach other people or share with them that you don't want to make this five-year mistake. Like, if you really want this thing, if you really want to design a, an incredible life for yourself, then do what's risky. Mm-hmm. Do what's risky. Believe me, everything that we have, we found a way to get it. Even if we didn't have the money, we found a way to get it. Like, if you really want something, you're going to get it. So it's like, do you really want this? Do you really want to 
have a better quality of life? Do you really want to get out of that nine to five that you hate? Do you really want to travel? Like, do you want to do that? Well, if you really do, you are going to sell stuff that you don't even use in your house. You're going to get a part-time job, which is something that I did. I worked in a a gentleman's club to pay for my first mentor, $10,000 mentor. Really? Yeah, I did that. I worked at night Mm -hmm. to pay because I knew that investing in that mentor was going to be the best investment that I made because... Mm -hmm. I wanted to build my business. And that's right? how committed you were to investing in a, in a coach. Yeah, absolutely. Because I knew that th- that was the guidance that I needed. And I'm not advising everybody to work at a gentleman's club, okay? <laughs> right. But believe me, I'm sure there's something that you can do to pay for that guidance. It's an investment. It's a business investment. So it's a business expense. Mm-hmm. And people don't think that. Like when tax the tax season comes around... It's a business expense, <laughs> you know. Absolutely, absolutely, a hundred percent. That's mm-hmm. that's that's deep though, because so many people they're so skeptical just because it's money leaving, but they don't realize that. I I think people don't understand what an investment is and what spending right. is because they'll spend you know one hundred and fifty dollars on shoes, clothes, or whatever. But yeah, they won't shit. spend. Yeah, they won't Excuse spend. Now. I don't know if you. I can cuss on here. No, you can be a hundred percent yourself. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, All right, un- unfil- <laughs> unfiltered style. Yes. <laughs> but a lot of people they won't spend. You know, three thousand dollars on somebody helping them do something that they don't know anything about, and you right. know they stay in the same place for so long. And they're wondering why they're not getting anywhere. It's like, do the thing that scares the crap out of you. Right. Get over yourself. Yes. Get over. And get the help. Yes. Yeah. Get over yourself. I mean, we all we stand in our way more more than anything. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In three to six months, that same person can help you realize the desired result that you were desiring. Absolutely. You know, so it's definitely, definitely interesting, just to say the least. Um, but that's that's very crazy. But I wanted to kind of talk about um, you, you, you talk about just how important, you know, sharing your story is. And so, you know, can you can you talk about, you know, let's just say how your business was before you were sharing your story? And the impact it's had ever since you started really being transparent and vulnerable. Absolutely. You know, during the first five years, my business was just growing slowly, very slow. I mean, five years is kind of a long time to be in business. I mean, I was making some money, but I wanted more because I wanted to build a certain type of lifestyle for my myself and my family. And I really wasn't sharing my story because I was still shameful about some of the things that I did in my past. And I was scared. I didn't want to be judged. You know, I thought people weren't going to like me. You know, I used to be a big time people pleaser because I don't I want everybody to like me. Right. Right. Um, But I, I didn't feel free during those first five years because I was not sharing all of myself Mm -hmm. and that, that right there, I wasn't able to really dig deep inside my psyche and really dig in deep inside and um, share my gifts openly, freely with unapologetically, Mm -hmm. you know, and my business was slow. It, It just grew slow. I just could not, kept on hitting a wall, Mm -hmm. right? Or I was slowly busting through that wall, but it was like I was trying to bust through that wall with a spoon, trying to (laughs) get through that wall with a spoon (laughs) instead of a bulldozer, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, that's when I was like, I finally got sick of it. I had enough. Like eventually, if you really want something, you're going to have enough of something. Like I, I was suffering enough. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's what I call it. I was suffering enough. Like I felt like I was going to die if I did not get through that dang wall. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to put up my pride. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I finally started working with my mentor, she 
she asked more about, you know, who I am, what I've been through and all of that. And I was really uncomfortable with sharing this stuff with her because I hadn't come to terms with all this stuff. Like I tried to suppress some of the things that I, I had gone through in my life, you know? Uh, so I started journaling, mm-hmm. you know, and, and me writing, I've always done this. Like ever since I was a little girl, matter of fact, I remember my mom, she found one of my journals. Oh my gosh. I got in so much trouble. <laughs> I was like uh, 15 mm-hmm. because I'd write everything out that was going on with my life. And you know, it was not always the best. I was kind of a freaky 15 year old. So, right. uh, I, yeah, I got in so much trouble, Isaiah. But the thing was, I remember when I was younger, I would always write stories and then I would write, you know, things that went on in my life. And it always, I always felt good. It always felt good to get that out. I was finding, trying to find a way to get that out. And I didn't realize that's what I was doing, of course, at the time. So when I, came, when I became an adult, um, I just kept those things to myself. Well, finally, I was like, you know what? This stuff that I've been through, it can actually help people. Mm -hmm. It can actually help people. So my mentor encouraged me to start sharing my story. She said, you don't have to share all of it. Just share what you've come to terms with. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, so I started sharing bits and pieces of my story here and there and my content, my articles, podcasts all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. And the moment I started doing that, I I noticed that I was connecting with people on a deeper level. I was getting more uh, of a following. Uh, People were talking to me more. People were saying that, you know, like our stories are similar. I've been through this and that. Thank you so much for sharing that because it's made me think of how to do things differently. And that's when the light bulb clicked on for me was that why am I keeping my story to myself? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm. So why were you? Why do you think, why were you and why do you think so many people keep their story to them? Because they don't want to be judged. Um, They don't want to be judged. They're scared. Mm -hmm. Uh, They haven't made peace with some of the stuff that happened in their past. Matter of fact, uh, one of my clients, uh, she was sexually abused. So uh, she had a lot of anger that, you know, she carried for a long time. And finally, when she started sharing this, uh, she started forgiving these people. I'm not saying that she would, like, be best friends with these people. But, you know, that hatred left because she realized that if it wasn't her, it would have been somebody else. Mm -hmm. And she now uses her story of being sexually abused to help other women. Right, right, right. right. Mm-hmm. So there's shame associated with not wanting to keep your story to yourself. Mm-hmm. Shame, fear of being judged, uh, scared that people aren't going to like you. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, anything negative, really. And that's why. It's not that I think I know because I, not only me, but with other people that I've coached, you know, like I went through many years feeling unworthy, uh, ugly. Not worthy of wealth, love, joy, happiness. And I manifested all of that in my life. So the moment I started sharing stuff with people, I started healing more. Dang, that's deep. Mm-hmm. The more you started to, to become vulnerable and put out there, the mm-hmm. more you personally became more healed. Yeah. And then your bank account started doing a happy dance. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. They all happy dance. Hammer time dance. The hammer time. Oh, that's when you know it's serious. Right. right. (laughs) That ain't no no regular dance right there. No, it's not. It is not. I can't even do that. But but yeah, you know, and I still heal. I mean, even if I share these stories, the same stories over and over again, Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I get a different perspective or like a memory comes back. I start remembering something else that was related to that story. And I just continue to share more and more and more. Right. right, I keep on sharing. So, so, you know, I keep on letting it out. mm -hmm. Do you tell your story? in your marketing or do you do you like share your story with the clients who you work with on a day-to-day basis like in in what oh. capacity do you share your story in what capacity well the thing is like with my marketing i definitely share it because uh stories 
pretty much a sell because like I mentioned to you earlier uh, when we were talking before we started recording how people buy based off of emotion Uh and the way to really hook somebody is with stories Mm -hmm. and whose story is better than your own because people get to learn about you Um, because at the end of the day people aren't buying your product or your service. They're buying you. Right. You've given them hope. Um, you've connected with them on an emotional level. Mm-hmm. That is the most powerful way to have a following of people who are hardcore fans of yours, um, who will definitely be your uh, what do you call them? Your cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they'll they'll share share you with their their people. Mm-hmm. You know, whoever's in their life. And uh, yeah, I share it in my marketing. I share it with my clients. Um, I, I I just share all the time. Um, I mentioned that. I intertwine my life experiences with my business. I, I somehow connect them because they are connected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Your, your, yeah, in your personal life, the things that you've been through in your business are definitely connected. They're not separate. Right, right, right. right. Mm-hmm. People just have to kind of figure out the best way to intertwine it for themselves. Yes, yes, right. absolutely. So once you tap in to sharing your life experiences, intertwining it with your business, you're going to notice something. <laughs> People will start connecting with you more. Right, 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 right. And then from there, you'll be able to kind of like see more results that you may not have been able to see. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I make sure that I engage with people that I connect with on social media because that's what social media is about, right? People aren't on Facebook to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. They're They're there to connect with people. So instead of me just trying to blindly push my stuff on people who have no idea who I am. I could have the cure for, I could have the, a bottle that gives you everlasting life. Right. Mm-hmm. But if nobody knows me, they're not going to buy it. Right. Like I have to build trust. Like we have to build trust with our audience because we're not these big companies. Right. right? Mm-hmm. We're not Nike. We're not Walmart. We're not Amazon. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we don't know. I mean, we, some of us may know who the CEOs are of buying these companies, but most of us don't. Right. And they're not uh, the face it, of their brand anyway. Right. Exactly. But we are the face of our business. Right. And if we're, and you've, we've got to really embrace that and realize that we live in a world right now to where you can't hide behind a logo. You can't hide behind your computer anymore because the market's changed. Absolutely. The market consumes video. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Video. Mm. My video. So it's not polished. <laughs> it's not polished and all pretty. It is raw and real. And that's what people love. Right. That's what they love. That's what they consume. That's what they connect to. That's what they relate to. Mm-hmm. Because we yes. all go through something in our lives. Absolutely. We and, you know, and, I'm, and for, for your audience, I'm not just saying to share the bad stuff. I'm, I'm saying share everything. Matter of fact, I had a woman yesterday um, in one of the groups that I'm a part of. She said that she compares her story to other people's and she feels that her story is boring. <laughs> and I told her, your story is not boring because the thing is, nobody's been through what you've been through exactly to a T, right, right? right? All of your experiences, even the ones you think are boring, there was a lesson to learn, Absolutely. right? What lesson did you learn out of it? What, how did it shape the way that that you are today, uh, the decisions that you make? So no matter what, even if you feel that your story was boring and, you know, you didn't have, like, all these horrible things, it doesn't have to be that. Just share your story. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Just share That's your story. It. <laughs> That's, it's that simple. And the funny thing is, although Nike doesn't have a face of the brand, they still tell stories. Yes. You know, these huge companies, they still tell stories. Right. So still. we got to take a look at that. Um, we have to basically do what the big companies are doing. However, uh, we have an advantage over these big companies. We can actually connect with 
with the people who follow us. We can you know, the they we can actually talk to them, reach out to them, messenger, mm-hmm. you know, Skype, and say, hey, what's going on? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, how you doing? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, um, what? Let 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 me know this. What mm-hmm. exactly do you do in the digital space now? What exactly do I do? Well, I help mainly women. I do have one male client uh, use, actually infuse collaborative strategies into their business model, no matter what type of business they have. It could be a network marketing business, service-based, product-based, no matter what stage of your business. If you just started yesterday, this would work for you. Um, Because the thing is, is that entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be doing it alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should be a master collaborator. I mean, Oprah is a master collaborator. Uh, all the successful people, they are. They don't work by themselves. They have teams of people. Uh, they collaborate with other um, successful people mm-hmm. to amplify their message, yep. to provide more value, to increase their credibility, to build their email list. Yes, Oprah has an email list, which Absolutely. is awesome. Absolutely, yeah. And um, also, it accelerates the growth of your business. So what I do, I teach uh, business owners uh, how to, you know, find ways to collaborate with other entrepreneurs in either the same industry or totally different one uh, because you have access to their audience and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And it's a win-win-win situation all the way around. Um I don't think of people that do the same thing I do as competition. Mm-hmm. I think the only competitor I have is my the negative side of myself. Yes. Uh, the ego side of myself. I'm competing with myself, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the more people that I network with and collaborate with, the, the more money I make, uh, the bigger impact I have on people's lives, uh, the more people that hear about me, uh, the bigger I build my email list. Right. Uh, the more I know. So, and this can work for anyone. Mm-hmm. So, what I mean by collaboration is like you and I, we're, we're doing a collaboration right now. It can be on a one to one or it can be one to many, like, uh, for example, summits. I know you see these all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah, all the time. And that is one of the best ways to build a huge email list and also be looked to as an expert, especially if you just started. Right, 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 right. So, just networking and being a resource to people. Keyword, be a resource Mm -hmm. (laughs) to people, and then you'll be able to, you know, um, branch out and do those type of things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it doesn't matter what stage of your business. So that's what I teach people because a lot of people leave that element out. And I mentioned that that is one of the secrets to quickly scaling your business is collaborating with other people. Uh, it's hiding in plain sight. Uh, the highly successful entrepreneurs in different in- industries, uh, you can look at them and you can see that this they're working with the same people, same group of people. Birds of a feather locked together. You know that saying. So it's really hard for people outside of that circle to get in there and penetrate that circle in Uh, flock with them, so to speak. So instead of looking over to them, putting them on a pedestal, what you can do, you can create your own collaborative network of people. You can engineer your own, Mm -hmm. right? So you find highly ambitious people who are success driven, uh, who are the right fit with you to collaborate. That's the thing. You don't want to just collaborate with anyone. You want to make sure that you vibe with them, they vibe with you, and that they're going to put all their their all into it. Yeah. Uh, because it's a two way street with the collaboration. Mm-hmm. Chemistry as well. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And what what I share with people who are starting to collaborate, who want to reach out to people, it's like uh, have a conversation with them for about 15, 20 minutes, mm-hmm. and see if they are the right person because you'll know. Right. You know, we, we have this thing called intuition. Use it. Right. Like, you know, when you flick well with somebody and when you don't, mm-hmm. or you may not be able to put your finger on something and just have a feeling that something's off. Well, if it doesn't feel quite right, you don't have to collaborate with that person. But I would say still, you know, keep in touch with them because you never know what can happen later on down the line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's just about building good relationships 
and, mm-hmm. and knowing when to um, capitalize and knowing when to kind of just chill and keep it keep it neutral and keep it cool. Right, right. And what I love about collaboration is that it's fun. I can work on whatever I want. Like mm-hmm. I can do Facebook Lives with other people, uh, podcast, uh, summit. You can do cover and in person events, uh, free events paid events, like master classes online. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do it. So, um, depending on your personality, you you can pick and choose what type of collaboration you want to do. Right. You don't have to be a clone of anybody, especially not me. I don't want anybody to be a clone of me. I want people to use their greatness and their unique strengths and gifts to create their own thing. Uh, because, there is no cookie cutter way to do business. There's so many different ways to do it. Right. And, um, and so that is a part of my philosophy. Also working on your mindset is part of my philosophy, because if you don't start there, nothing else is really going to work out. Nothing. You know, nothing. Literally. And yeah. Yeah. So that's what I basically do. And, you know, I, I love writing. I'm a contributor for the Huffington post and also thrive global. Mm-hmm. Um, keeping my eyes on ink and entrepreneur and what I do instead of keeping all of that visibility to myself, um, I actually, uh, feature people so I can, uh, help them. I like to put them on the spotlight because they're amazing people Mm -hmm. and I want to try to give them as much exposure as possible. And I'm not saying anyone, I'm saying people that are highly ambitious and who really are doing things, you know, um, they, they need as many people as possible to know about them. Right. So um, I don't keep my my column just to myself. Right. And I easily could. I could, like, brag about myself all day long because that's boring, right? <laughs> right. So, I would be- <laughs> so I would rather spotlight and showcase people that actually inspire me. Mm-hmm. And if they inspire me, just think of how many more people could be Im- inspired by them. Absolutely. Stacy, mm-hmm. you so amazing. So are you. Thank <laughs> you. You are, you are super cool, for real. Um, and I say that because just just from the chemistry, right? It's mm-hmm. it's great, and it's been a it's been so amazing. And I've gotten so many different gems and so many different nuggets that you've dropped that I know everybody listening as well uh, can take and should take and apply it to their life immediately because. You know, things like taking a break and collaborating and then you breaking down different types of collaborations because it doesn't have to be about money. You know, it could just be about synergy and and, and good energy and stuff like that. So you've really just broke a lot of stuff down. And I really appreciate that um, sincerely, for real. Well, thank you. I appreciate having this conversation with you and uh, giving me an opportunity to, I guess, share more about myself and I've much about you that that's great yeah yeah it gets deep and it it gets deeper too i ain't even yeah i ain't even really started with you but (laughs) (laughs) just know that it's always another level to it yes absolutely (laughs) but um where can people where can people find you at and where can they find out more about you okay well i can be found mainly on facebook and instagram uh you can go you can just type me in on Facebook, Stacy Walker, S T A C I E, and then Walker, W A L K E R. I have a business page, Stacy Walker Media, and I have a morning show uh, Monday through Friday. It's Mornings with Stacy, where I talk mainly about mi- mindset development, personal development, all of that. Just basically whatever resonates with me before I go live. Uh, it's to help people set the tone for their day so they can focus on designing that beautiful life that they envision for themselves. And also I can, you can, anyone can go to my website at stacywalker.com. I'm in the middle of moving things around, but you can definitely find me at stacywalker.com. Got you. Well, that's all written down. And if you're listening, go check her out, reach out because we love hearing people who've listened to these episodes reach out to us because that kind of shows you know um just our reach and and the fact that we really 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 got to somebody today yes so um so definitely reach out to stacy and uh stacy do you have any exiting words i guess what i can tell your audience is that anything is possible Mm -hmm. you just have to believe it 100 percent 
and you have to go all in, mm-hmm. right? I understand it's scary. Uh, it can be uncomfortable. But if you stick to it, you can have a life beyond your wildest dreams. Yes, absolutely. So with that being said, guys, take that, run with it, go make it happen, whatever you've been thinking about for the last year, two years, five years, make it happen because we're making it happen. We don't try, we do. So um, Stacy, I'll be talking to you soon and everybody listening. I hope you will be talking to Stacey soon as well. So that's going to be the show. We're going to talk to you on the next show. Thanks for listening to the Starts With a Vision podcast. Come get your vision clear at www.startswithavision.com. See you there.